Hello again. Well, we're on the third video now in a series of three. Uh, first video, links down below, by the way, in the description if you want to see them. We replaced the TV modulator just here on the Z ZX81. Second video is we upgraded the RAM just here from 1K to 16K. And on the third video that we're doing now, we are going to be replacing the keyboard that's on here as you can see we've got damage here got damage here and here i wonder if someone's tried to have a crack at this in the past so we need to take this off and we'll replace it with this new one here and what we also need to do is in here we've got a bit of the old plastic still in the socket so we need to get that out first as well Right, so let's grab a little pair of pliers and just see if we can gently get this out. There we go. That's the bit of ribbon out of there, so that's, that was quite easy. Just check the other one as well. Yep, that's clear as well, so that's okay. Right, I can put that board to one side and we need to have a look at this. Let's just zoom out a bit, here we go. Right, okay, so on this board, the cable, and there's where it broke off from just there, comes through this hole here. So I think what we need is we need the heat gun out to warm this old um, keyboard up so we can just warm up the glue and gently pull it off. So let's get the heat gun warmed up. Right, the heat gun's on, so let's just very just gently just warm this up Well, that's got it off as you can see I just gently warm it up uh, and which melts the glue slightly and that enables you to pull it off and we can see now here how the keyboard's actually made up so you got a contact here and a contact there and as, as you press the key it pushes through and makes a connection um, so the other thing is is that one of these cables controls the wires going horizontal and the other one controls the cables going vertical and that's when you can press a key and it knows which one's being pressed by the X and Y coordinate um, and um, that makes the key work. So there's the damage just there of this key which was the, uh, the U key here. Luckily there's no damage to the actual plastic as I was actually concerned there might be some damage there but there's not so that's okay. So we should be okay for the new one. Right, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit cautious about this because once I pull the protection off the back of this keyboard, as soon as I slide it in, it's going to want to stick. So I want to be able to start at the top and then push it down like that. So let's have a look, see how this is going to go. What 
don't want to do is damage the actual keyboard membrane itself. Half of it done. Let's see if we can get this in. Let's got that in. So let's pull this off. And I just pulled it out. Let's do that again. up on that corner but I think that's okay feels okay there's no bumps or lumps or anything you can actually feel little holes in the middle where the keys are so I think that's okay that's actually looking quite good now isn't it right so these cables then Tell you what, let's um, let's give this case a quick clean before we put it back together again. Right, two very quick jobs we need to do before we put it back in its case. First of all, let's put the top of this back on. Doesn't make really much of a difference, but it lives there, so let's just put that on again. There we go, that's on. And the other thing I'd like to do is um, add a heat sink. Now, this little heat sink I bought off eBay. The ULAs are known for getting very hot. So the chip is right in the middle, so I'm just going to pop that on. I think I put it on that way around. So put that on there. There we go. And that'll just help dissipate the heat a bit. Okay, let's get the top and let's get the keyboard plugged in. Right, we've got the top, so what we need to do is to bend this around very carefully and then slot these in to place. There we go, that's one done. two done. Okay, now we can put the board back on. Just make sure everything lines up. A bit springy because I've got the uh, I've got the uh, new ribbon in place. That's why it's making it a bit springy, but that's okay. Just making sure all the holes line up for the screws, like so. Right, let's grab the screw box. Right, I've got the two screws in, one here, one here. It was a bit fiddly because I had to hold it down and get the screwdriver at the same time. But that's the board in place now. So what we need to do is put the cover on it, like so. Right, 
just got it just not quite fitting at the back there, so let's just reset it. There we go, that's got it. So the screws, just don't forget about the screws, there's short screws and long screws. Uh, the short screws go down the bottom here. So there we have it. I will put the rubber feet on in a minute. What I want to do first though is power it up and uh, make sure it actually works. Right, <coughs> let's get this sorted out then. So, uh, power needs to go in. Just there. Um, let me just adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. Uh, signal lead needs to go in. Like so. Um, let's see if we can Switch my desk lights off. Okay, so you should be able to see the screen now. Fingers crossed, let's see how it goes. I've got the grey screen, that's good. Hey, we've got the K, brilliant. Uh, let's see if it works. Hey, look at that. Hello. Hey, you t tell that I can't spell, can you? Uh, oh, let's leave it as that. It's supposed to be hello world, but never mind. Ta da! Right. 10. Print. Oh, no, no, sorry. Oh, shift, rub out. Right. Hello world. 20. God, this, this takes me back. Uh, go to, go to, go to, go to. It's not on G. Yes, it is on G. Go to. 10. Run. <laughs> Hello world. Right, okay, so we need to check the um, memories working on this and for that I need a little program. So bear with me for a second while I just grab the bit of paper and I shall be back with you to show you how to test the memory. Well, instead of you having to sit there watching me painfully type the program in, because it took me ages to find where some of those things were, like the brackets, and the semicolon and think things like that, but found them eventually. Um, that is a little program that you need to uh, type in uh, to make sure you can see, uh, check the memory size. Now remember originally it was 1K um, and then we upgraded it to 16K using that, that chip we bought. Uh, that was in video two. So let us run that now and the result is, because it has to run through the loop, memory size is 16K, so we know that the memory is working correctly. So there we have it, one working ZX81. I hope you enjoyed watching that. So that was the TV modular change, the RAM change, and the keyboard change. The very, very last thing that we need to do at some point is to put the feet back on. Um, so what I need to do for this is to dig out some of my double-sided tape uh, and then we can stick them on. Don't think you'd be very interested in watching that. And then that'll be all done. So there we go. So again, thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like what I do. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.